struggle with imposter syndrome? As a tattoo artist, no matter how many awards you've won, followers you have, or money you make, you just don't feel like you're a part of the conversation? Or maybe is your work-life balance out of whack? I mean, I get it. It's tough trying to manage your life and your clientele. Or maybe you want to get your artwork critiqued, but it's really difficult to find that authentic critique, that authentic feedback you need. After 22 years, I've still been dealing with this, these issues, or was. And it's unfortunate because we participate in one of the oldest forms of self-expression. Actually, tattooing has existed since before written history. Archaeologists have discovered tattoos as old as 5,400 years old, carbon dated bodies from 3300 BCE. The first discovery of tattoos was on Pete Bogmani, and he had over 60 tattoos on his body, and they were in places of acupuncture leading researchers to believe that tattooing must have been even older if it was already being used for therapeutic purposes. You see, as tattoo artists, we descend from tribal leaders, elders, shamans, and healers, protecting and guiding their people through putting symbols in their body. And it has existed throughout history ever since. We can find them on ancient Egyptian mummy women with nets tattooed across their abdomen, believed to protect their children during pregnancy. And we've all seen those National Geographic videos of those Samoans getting those sticks stabbed in their body, getting those tattoos from their knees all the way to their nipples. But we tend to forget about our ancient European ancestors, the Saxons, Danes, and Norse collecting their tattoos upon traveling the world. Even during the Crusades, knights were to have found to have crosses tattooed on their hands to ensure a Christian burial. And there was even some royalty with tattoos. King Edward VII and his sons, King George V and Prince Albert, all had tattoos. During the turn of the century, an article was written by the New York World Historical Society stating that over three quarters of the wealthy New York socialite women were tattooed. And they would pay prices upwards to a fine dress. But this was during a time, at this point, when our warriors were starting to come home from World War I and World War II wearing badges of honor and survival, coming back from, from battle. But this was in a time before veteran affairs, so post-traumatic stress syndrome was just a, an idea. It was actually no research was done. And, and many of these veterans were just told to suck it up, soldier, and go back to life. So they would have to find ways and communities to, to come together to deal with these stresses and anxieties. So they found themselves in some clubs and even founding some predominant bike clubs like Hells Angels. So then you have this iconic image of these tattooed bikers all hanging around a tattoo shop, rough and tumble. And I mean, it wasn't uncommon for tattoo shops back in the day, in the early 1900s, to have bouncers to kind of keep the riffraff down. So this made tattooers quite rough and tumble. And again, this was a, a time when business marketing and management was, was not really a thing in this industry. So when tattooers dealt with their competition, they dealt with their competition. This really hurt our ability to communicate with each other and share information. It really closed us off from each other and we walled up all of our information and techniques and we didn't grow. This scarcity mentality set root into our industry. But that didn't stop the popularity of tattooing. It continued to grow and grow and grow and grow till today where nearly half of Americans have at least one tattoo. Actually, a recent IBIS World Poll found that 46% of Americans have at least one tattoo. I mean, that's over 150 billion people. And the same poll found that we generated last year alone over $1.7 billion. I mean, we are tattooing every demographic now. Of course, military and law enforcement, fire department, but lawyers, doctors, surgeons, even politicians. And with this growing number of people collecting tattoos, there's a lot of people who want to do tattoos. But they run into that scarcity mentality wall that I was just mentioning. There's no way for them to gain the information, the proper information they need, so they're trying to find it any way they can. So they're going to YouTube, eBay, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. Anybody can buy tattoo equipment today and then mess up their friends tomorrow. And I'm not talking about just bad looking tattoos, I'm talking about scarring and infection. A tattoo is an injection of ink molecules into the dermis. It's a minor topical surgery. And this has had some unintended circumstances. 
Where? The tattoo industry is starting to become overregulated and, and regulated improperly by outside entities. To the point where it doesn't even make sense the way they're trying to regulate it. So, back in 2015, my local community got together and realized we need to do something about this. So we went through the legislative session and lobbied and pushed Senate Bill 275 to create the Board of Body Art Practitioners, which eventually I was appointed to sit on and, and then became the chairman for it. And I was able to work with my community to create regulations that made sense for us. But working within state politics, I think I'd be preaching to the choir when I say it's pretty corrupt. And there's a lot of self-interested parties. So there was a lot of battling on that front. But because I was involved with regulation, I mean, in my industry, regulation is a dirty word. It, it conjures up feelings and, and sensations of agitation, frustration, and confusion. And because there wasn't a great way for us to come together and communicate about this stuff, I was labeled by my peers the tattoo police. I'm over here protecting our livelihood and, and fighting against these self-interested parties, and yet I'm still being labeled something that I had nothing to do with. It was very disheartening. I felt like an island. Then something amazing happened. I had a, a conversation with an amazing person. CEO and founder of Tattoo Smart, Russ Abbott, was telling me about this platform called Launchpad. This is a space where vetted professionals come to have open, honest, and authentic communications about everything I just talked about. Imposter syndrome, work-life balance, critiques, tech reviews, even regulation. And it is here that I have felt valued. I have been sought out for my skills. I have been appreciated. And I've actually just been able to help people from across the country with the skill set I have here. I've even met my business coach, Dr. Jeremy Miller, helping me get my work life balance in order. And even financial advisor Ryan Warren is putting me on the path to financial freedom. Because tattooing isn't just about making tattoos. It's a whole picture. And if one thing is out of balance, it could affect the entire process. It could affect the tattoo. And it could definitely hinder the experience of the client. Because we know when, when somebody's getting tattooed, they have to override that fight or flight response. It hurts. You want to get away from it. But instead, you have to sit there and accept the pain being inflicted upon you. And you have to trust the person doing it. So the relationship between a tattoo artist and a tattooee is an intimate bond built on trust and acceptance. And the words that we say to our clients will penetrate way deeper than any other situation. And as on Launchpad, I've discovered the 12th Man Campaign, which is actually helping educate tattoo artists on early discussions about depression and suicide. Who knows? The advice, the link we share, the, the attentive ear we gave that client could have saved their life. And now with the, the explosion of tattooing, I mean, we as an industry are tattooing millions of people per day. That's millions of lives per day we can benefit. But we can't do that unless we're whole, unless we're complete. And we need that community. We need that peer group to support us. It doesn't matter if you're a, a veteran tattoo artist, a business owner, or even a brand new tattoo artist. It is here you can connect with peers thought leaders and mentors to help make your career whole. You're not an imposter. You have value. We want to hear your experiences, your ideas, your thoughts, your concerns. It is together we can propel our career and our industry forward. Expect to be accepted. So come aboard and join me on Launchpad.